right. Welcome. I'm so happy to have all of you here. Hopefully the chat is working. And for those of you that are here live, you can actually just say hello. I love your feedback. I love your energy. I love knowing that you are here. So feel free to say hello in the chat and let me know that you're here. All right, we are diving in. For those of you who have been to master classes that I've hosted before, welcome back. <laughs> for those of you for whom this is your first time, welcome. I am so glad to have all of you here. I am Dr. Siobhan Parat. I am a life and marriage coach. And I work with both couples and individuals to create healthy, happy marriages that last. I have been doing this for 10 years. This is my 10 year anniversary. This month, in fact, is when I officially incorporated my business, started coaching, and I couldn't be more delighted to celebrate this milestone with this specific masterclass, which to me feels like a masterpiece, quite frankly. It feels like a masterpiece. And I'm so excited for you all having this information in the way that I now have come to understand it. And um, I'm very excited to have you all here. So thank you. Hello to all of you who are saying hello. It's so nice to feel your energy in the chat. Um, this will be interactive. So get familiar with that chat. Um, you should be able to just message me directly or message everyone and interact with each other. But we are going to dive in because I have a lot that I want to make sure I convey to you. So here's the thing. In my 10 years of doing this work uh, in my business, the number one thing that people come to me wanting help with is communication, this very topic. And so that is exactly what we are going to solve for here today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out the work. I am going to spell out for you exactly what it takes. And for those who will listen to this information, for whom it will deeply resonate and who are looking for more support and actually carrying out this work, those who want my direct help, I will share with you two very specific ways right now that you can work with me directly um, to really begin implementing and applying these concepts, approaches, and strategies that I'm going to be sharing in this call today. So let's just dive right in. I want you to first think about your definition of good communication in your marriage, because that is the topic. And so it is so important that you have in your own mind some idea of what that actually looks like. Many times what I find is that people throw out vague ideas. I want us to communicate more. I want us to communicate better. But what exactly does that even mean? So if you feel comfortable, you can just put in the chat what good communication looks like and means to you, okay? And your definition may be very similar to your partner's. Your definition may be very different from your partner's. That is something that you really want to notice and pay attention to. But many times when I do this exercise with my couples, they have the same things. They're saying the same thing in just different ways, which is also a theme that I noticed throughout how people are communicating in general and where people get tripped up. So some of the things when I think about what it looks like to improve your communication, what good communication looks like, it includes listening to each other, 
It includes being calm and grounded when you're talking to each other. It includes seeking to understand each other rather than just having the conversation to prove your point. It looks like valuing your partner's perspective and willing to be wrong, willing to be influenced, willing to learn something that maybe the way you're seeing it might be different. It also means being willing to own your part in conflict and issues that you have. It includes being able to apologize and repair very quickly when you do have conflict. Um, it means treating each other with kindness and respect, even when you don't disagree, like not judging each other, but valuing each other as human beings with different perspectives. I think it also includes staying engaged and present instead of shutting down and refusing to talk. It also means being open-minded and not dominating conversations with only your ideas and your perspective and trying to control and convince your partner. It's, it looks like making space for each other. And then I think it also looks like being emotionally responsive and being able to demonstrate empathy. Those are some of the things that when I talk to my clients, that they're looking for, right? Many times when people are looking to hire me, they fill out a form and I ask them, what do they want? These are the things that they want. And as I scroll the chat, right? Your comments here in the chat, this is it, right? Listening to understand what you say is received well, um, understanding your thoughts and feelings without having to give a Cliff Notes versions. Yeah, being empathetic and gentle in tone. I love that so much. Um, my husband and I used to joke, uh, we went to a wedding once and the pastor who was marrying the couple really sort of advised them like, don't ever lose your tender tone with each other. And we just thought that was so funny one, because who says tender tone, but then it became like our little catchphrase whenever either one of us would like be out of pocket with our tone. So yes, yes to everything that you have just put in the chat. So communication is important, right? You wouldn't be here on a masterclass about communication if you didn't already see the value of it. And what I find is most important about communication is that it is the doorway to connection. That a connected marriage is one where you feel comfortable talking with each other, where it feels safe to talk to each other. And a disconnected and unhappy marriage is where you can't actually talk to each other. So when you can't talk to each other, you can't connect. And the thing that I wanted to really use as sort of our umbrella for this conversation today on how to improve your communication is one singular concept. So this is like our umbrella concept. And then we're going to talk about all the little spokes underneath it. So the one main concept that I want to explore and discuss with you and teach about as it relates to marriage is the concept of self-leadership. So I want you to just like take that in. That if we're solving for your communication issues, the one main concept you need to focus on is self-leadership. And what I mean by this idea of self-leadership is the ability to lead yourself and to show up as your best self, no matter what. Okay. So before you want to jump off <laughs> and disagree with me, here's what self-leadership is not. It is not being a doormat. Self-leadership is not sacrificing your own self and your needs to the point of resentment. It is not turning a blind eye to things in your marriage that genuinely don't work for you. It is not accepting something that is unhealthy or dysfunctional right? But what self-leadership is and what it looks like is you creating your own standards 
and operating out of your personal best. So when we look at all of those qualities and all those characteristics of what great communication looks like, that requires that you and your spouse are being your best. You only get to those things when you are being conscious and intentional about showing up in a very specific way. That is self-leadership. Self-leadership is also where you are driven by your own internal motivation. Because a lot of times when I'm having conversations with people, they will say like, well, why am I the one to always do X, Y, and Z? right? Why do I have to be the one to, you know, do all these things and apply all these principles? And what they're really saying in that is there's sometimes when I don't think my partner deserves my best. And I can understand that, right? I have my own marriage. I am a human. I'm married to a human. And so I can understand that idea of like, this person is not giving me their best. So why should I lead myself to giving them my best. And here's where we go wrong. We are looking at how we show up as contingent upon what another person is doing, but how we are showing up can be something that we do based on our own sense of integrity and being in alignment with ourselves. It doesn't feel good when you're not being your best. It doesn't feel good when you're making the petty comment or you're, you know, making the sarcastic comments or you're doing that sort of tit for tat thing that we can kind of want to do. It doesn't feel good when your partner is reactive and then you're reactive right back at them. And so you want this idea of self-leadership to really focus on your internal motivation that it's not dependent on what the other person is doing, that you set your own personal standards, you're paying attention to your choices and your reactions, and you are deciding your own personal standards of behavior. And you consider that, like, how do I want to treat this person, even when I don't agree with them, even when they're not showing up and being their best for me? And the other thing that is so beautiful about self-leadership is that you stand solidly for what is healthy and your desires and requirements in your relationship, especially when it comes to communication. And so essentially what this means is that you show up as your best because that's the kind of person you are. You lead yourself well. You don't get petty. You don't spend a lot of time being reactive to what's happening. You are intentional. You are conscious. And so I want to explore with you, like, how you feel you're doing with that. If you were to rate yourself on a scale of one to 10, how well are you leading yourself? Where one is, I'm not leading myself well at all. And 10 is, I'm knocking it out the park. I would love for you to just put your answers in the chat and just be honest, right? There's no, there's no, like, no, no shame, no matter what your number is. Okay. So we've got some eights. Good. We've got some high numbers there. Fantastic. It's so funny. I always love when I ask these questions and people rate themselves. Part of my doctoral research was this concept of interpartner reliability, where like one person was rating themselves on some quality or characteristic. And then we were asking their partner what they would rate. And like the numbers never matched, right? So you may give yourself a certain number. Your partner may give you a wildly different number. Um, so we've got eight, six, sevens, fives. Okay. That's good. That's good. That's honest. Um, so we want to be conscious of being our best. And so what I want to do for the rest of our time is talk about the four main obstacles, the four biggest things that get in the way of you actually being able to lead yourself well consistently and to, you know, no matter what, show up as your best, most loving intentional self in your marriage. Okay. So number one, and for my note takers, definitely take notes on this, right? I'm not using slides today because I really just want this to feel like a very in-depth personal transformation 
for you. And I don't want the cumbersomeness of slides. Okay. So number one, unhealed or unaddressed experiences that we all have and carry from childhood, previous relationships, and history in your current marriage. Okay. So we're talking the obstacles, the things that get in the way of you leading yourself well. Unhealed or unaddressed experiences from childhood, previous relationships, or history and things that have happened inside your current marriage, right? Now, how we know this happens and what it looks like is a lot of times we exist in a triggered state, meaning there is a overreaction, meaning you are highly and intensely emotional and emotionally reactive to a circumstance or an incident in proportion that is greater than the actual situation. So it's sort of like the person who will blow up and lose it when they walk in the house and their dishes in the sink, or the person who will call and text their partner incessantly when they don't respond back to them, or the person who, you know, suggest something that you all do together as a couple and they don't get the response that they want. So they just like shut down and say, I will never ask you to do something like this again. Right. A simple circumstance, a simple situation, but for you inside and emotionally, it is huge. It is a big deal. And so what's happening in these situations when we are in a triggered state is these things come up for you and you go into what is called fight or flight mode. And in this day and age, we've expanded fight and flight to include two other responses, freeze and fawn. So what that means is that when you're confronted with a situation, you are reacting not only to that situation right there, but you're also reacting to some wounding or trauma that you experienced as a child that feels like that. And or you had another relationship where that dynamic was similar. And or this particular situation is so commonplace in your current marriage and has never fully been resolved that it's like an open wound. And so in your triggered state, you are activated to either fight, which means you're going to have very aggressive conversation, complaining conversation, criticizing, blaming, shaming communication. You are going to be on attack mode or you're going to have a flight response meaning you are going to kind of check out of the situation. You're going to distract yourself with something else. You're going to sweep it under the rug. You're going to minimize it, dismiss it, defend yourself. Or you might have a freeze response, which is you are emotionally overwhelmed and you literally say nothing, right? There have been so many times when I'm coaching my clients and they're trying to have a conversation with their partner and their partner is literally like a deer in headlights saying nothing. They're emotionally flooded and overwhelmed. Or you might have a fawn response, which is what we consider sort of people pleasing, that you're going to yes your partner. You're going to be a yes man, a yes woman, like, yes, I'm sorry, you're right, just to escape the conversation, right? So you want to know when it comes to you being triggered, what is your automatic nervous system response? Is it fight, flight, freeze, or fawn? And what you want to do is you want to be able to connect the dots for why that is so hard for you, whatever the situation is. And many times what I find is that there is a wounded child or a wounded younger version of yourself actually showing up to that interaction. And so using the healthy communication skills that you can Google or read in any communication book, 
is not going to cut it. It's like trying to tell a five-year-old child to use your words when they're in the middle of a temper tantrum, right? It just doesn't work. Your brain, the part of your brain that's going to use any healthy communication skills is literally shut off. And so you have to know when that part of you is showing up. You have to know what is activating that part of yourself, right? But what I find is that so much of this is unconscious, right? We don't even know because we're just angry and we're lashing out or we're angry and we're distracting ourselves or we're frustrated and we just shut down, okay? So you want to be practicing the skill of self-awareness. And I have this concept called trigger tracing, where I literally show you how to trace any of the triggers that you are experiencing in your marriage back to their root. And when you understand the root, your whole experience of that trigger changes. So I want to give you an example. I had a client, a woman who was married for many, many years. And what she found was so hard for her in her marriage, among other things, was feeling like anytime her husband gave her a suggestion or asked her a question, she felt like he was being controlling and criticizing her, no matter how he said it. So this is a case where we could have given him all of the right communication skills. And yet, because her experience and her trigger was feeling like she was controlled, it wouldn't work. She always had a bad reaction. But what we did in the trigger tracing process was we uncovered that she grew up in a very, very strict and religious home where there was a lot of, you can't do this, you shouldn't do this. And there was a lot of shame for not following the layers upon layers of rules. And so anytime her husband would make a suggestion, anytime he would ask her a legitimate question, it triggered her into what her experience was like as a child, feeling so micromanaged and so controlled. And so once we uncovered that, she was able to totally reframe and see with fresh eyes and a new degree of accuracy what was actually happening in her conversations with our husband, her husband. Okay. So what this means for you is that there is a part of this that if you genuinely want your communication to get better for good, that you have to take a look at your past. And so many people want to just dismiss their childhood, dismiss some of the things that they experienced as children, dismiss some of the things that they experienced in other relationships. And in order for you to create a different experience in your now, in your present day, you have to look at the past. You don't have to stay stuck in it. You don't have to rehash unhelpful things, but you do have to take a look and understand it. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, the thing that gets in the way is an inability to regulate your emotions. I know I'm throwing out a lot of psychological and coaching jargon. What does that really mean? It means you can't get a handle on your emotions, right? And why this happens is you don't pause. You, me, we, everybody, right? When you're activated, again, that part of your brain is shut off. And so there is a lack of an ability to pause and really be able to check in with yourself to see like, what's really happening here? What's going on for me? And instead, what's happening is you're in a constant state of reacting to emotions that you're not even fully aware of. So you might say things that you don't really mean. You might try to override your feelings and you're not even aware of what you're really experiencing. You might um, dismiss something like your spouse may pick up on it and they may say like, Hey, are you okay? Like what's wrong with you? You'll be like, nothing's wrong with me. Clearly there's an emotion underneath that, that you are just not aware of conscious of paying attention to. Right. And so what is so interesting about emotions and specifically as it relates to being able to improve communication 
is that many people are not aware that you can actually control and direct your emotions by the way that you think. I want you to just sit with that. You can actually control and direct your emotions by the way that you think, right? What many people believe though, is that they are the cause of their emotions, that their emotions are some uncontrollable extension of themselves and they are like disempowered by their emotions. That's not true. You can actually cultivate your own brain to create emotions that serve you. The other thing that happens with our inability to regulate and control and soothe our emotions is a resistance to emotions, right? No one wants to feel upset or, you know, unloved. No one wants to feel lonely or rejected or misunderstood or judged. No one wants to feel wrong. And so what ends up happening is we resist feeling that way. I don't want to feel rejected, so I'm just going to shut off and disengage from you. I don't want to feel wrong, and so I'm going to keep going toe-to-toe with you in this conversation because the feeling of feeling inadequate is intolerable to me. And so you want to really start paying attention to what are the emotions I'm unwilling to feel And because I'm unwilling to feel that way, it has me showing up not as my best self. It has me not leading myself well because I'm spending a lot of energy and time not feeling very natural and very human emotions. So I'm going to give you another example of this. I had a client um, and it was a couple and they have three small kids. And so they had like on this particular day, a division of labor where the husband cooked dinner with the kids. He was putting them to bed and then cleaning the kitchen. And they had decided that they were going to have what I teach a marriage check-in conversation. They were going to have an important conversation after all of that was done. And so his wife is like, you know, busying herself with other things. I think she was on the computer doing some work, waiting for him, because again, they had a very clear division of labor of how things were going to go that evening. And so what happened though, is that inside of himself, he really wanted her to help him in this division of labor that they had already decided, but he didn't say anything about it. And so he felt, um, unsupported. But again, overriding the emotions, not really paying attention to it. He didn't say anything. He didn't acknowledge even for himself that that's how he was feeling. And so they go to have this conversation and it ends really poorly because he's on edge. He's not open-minded. He's not practicing any of the skills that he knows to practice. And as I was coaching him and we were analyzing this scenario, We uncovered that initial emotion of feeling unsupported, of feeling alone, of feeling like it wasn't a partnership, but then trying to like layer on this conversation when he was already feeling that way, right? And so it's so important that you do develop the skill of knowing like, what's going on for me? How am I feeling? And today I was doing a call with um, with a new couple I'll be working with. And I asked a question and the husband was like, man, you're going to get me in my feelings. And I'm like, yes, that is this work. If you genuinely want your communication to be better and to be different, there is a part of this that requires you get in your feelings. Because let me tell you, your feelings are running the show. Your feelings are putting you in that fight, flight, freeze, or fawn response that is breaking down and eroding the quality of your communication. So you want to be thinking about your emotions. All right. Number three, the third thing that gets in the way of you being able to lead yourself well is just not having the know-how, not having the healthy skills. And so many of us grow up in dysfunctional environments, but we don't even know that it's dysfunctional because it's familiar. And so we think That's just how people talk to each other. That's just how people handle conflict. There's nothing wrong with that. 
That's how it was done in my family. And sometimes I have to like throw up my stop sign and be like, that's dysfunction. That's not healthy. It shouldn't be that way. Because we don't know, right? We grow up in these environments and God bless our parents and God bless our grandparents and God bless the whole lineage, right? But we're now living in a day and age where we have such massive access to healthy communication skills and tools. And so as you expose yourself to that, as you plug in to master classes like this, my podcast, my YouTube, my email, all the things that I put out there, it is my hope and desire that you begin to see that just because that's how it was done in my house and just because my parents may still be together doesn't mean that it's functional, doesn't mean that it's healthy, doesn't mean that it's anything to ever be replicated. And so we don't have the skills because we were never taught the skills. We never saw the skills. We don't even know that we're missing some skills that we're actually missing. And what what do I mean when I say that, right? That's yelling, name calling when you're angry. That's not healthy. There's shutting down and refusing to talk about something. That's not healthy. There's being defensive and being unwilling to look at yourself and acknowledge your responsibility in some conflict. That's not healthy. There's assuming that someone else should just know what you want and anticipate your needs. Not healthy. Complaining your way to get what you want, shaming your partner, blaming your partner, criticizing your partner. Not healthy. And so, so many of the things that couples need to create healthy communication are just missing. Like we're looking in the toolboxes and the tools aren't there, right? And some of the main communication skills that I see that people are missing are how to start an important conversation. Usually conversations start with a complaint. Why don't you ever, why can't you ever, when are you ever going to, right? So we don't know how to start conversations. We don't know how to constrain issues and just talk about one thing at a time. You have those marathon conversations that start off as one thing, but then it snowballs into all these other things because you have that history, whether it's the history in the relationship, the history in your past relationship or the history from your childhood. So everything is just like a groundswell magnifying itself upon itself, right? Um, Other things, how to make a request, how to set a boundary, how to express a concern, how to resolve conflict. Those are all skills that people just don't actually have, right? Other skills that people are missing, not only the communication, tangible, tactical skills, the relational skills. Having a healthy relationship is a set of skills, right? We think because when we first get together, it's so easy and natural. We think we're not practicing any skills, but you are. And over time, you take your eye off of those skills because they never really felt like skills. But skills that are so important to improving your communication, how to be empathetic and vulnerable, how to be compassionate and emotionally responsive. Those are the most important ones that I teach on and can talk about every single day, all day. Those are my favorites, all right? So I'm gonna give you another example here. I had a client who grew up um, really tough circumstances, right? Father, not there, mother doing the best she could. He was the youngest boy and In his life, he did not experience a lot of empathy. His home was not nurturing, right? His mom was just like doing what she had to do to keep the family surviving, right? And he never had anyone to talk to. So we were talking about this, how, you know, he'd come home from school and have a really bad day and there was nobody there for him to talk to and to share how he was feeling. And so what happened for him is he just shut that part of himself off. It's like, oh, my problems don't matter. My feelings don't matter. Click off, right? And so he had a wife though, who was the exact opposite, who was very tenderhearted, very emotional, in tune with herself and how she was feeling. And so whenever she would share with him how she was feeling, he could not handle it. 
he would get so angry, so frustrated, so annoyed, right? And what we found was that he just didn't have the skills because one, he didn't have any empathy receptors or very few because he never experienced empathy. And then he didn't know how to give it to her, right? But we worked on that. He developed the skill set of empathy. And if you listen to my podcast, I actually did um, a podcast episode. I didn't call them by name, but I talked about like what it looks like when this work works, right? And they are a living example of that now because he learned the skills, right? And we have to have some grace and space for ourselves and our partners because a lot of times what it takes to have healthy communication are things that we just have an empty well. We don't even have anything to draw from because we didn't have it input in the first place, okay? Number four, this is the last one, is... Part of what gets in the way of you being able to lead yourself well in your marriage and have great communication is you're not practiced at directing your mind. Say that again. You're not practiced at directing your mind. What are you talking about, Dr. Siobhan? So we have, goodness gracious, 80,000 thoughts a day. And many of those thoughts are unintentional, just loops. We're not even paying attention. They're just like audio recordings going on in our head. And what happens is we believe our thoughts. So we have a thought, your partner doesn't care. He doesn't care about you. She's always complaining about something. This is like, I'm so unhappy and I'm so frustrated, right? Those thoughts can be on continuous repeat. And it feels like the truth. My partner doesn't care. My partner is always complaining. My partner never gives me the time and attention that I want. And so when you rehearse thoughts over and over and over again, your brain begins to wire itself and to literally look for that to be true. So it's building a mountain of evidence that this is the truth. And there's so many times when I'm talking with people and I'll say to them like, what if that's not true? And they're looking at me like, what are you talking about? Of course it's true, but it's not. Most times it's not, right? That what feels true to us is only a perception. It's only the lens with which we see something and have conditioned ourselves to see something. And we all have biases that shape the way we experience situations. We all have a unique perspective that is our default way of seeing things. How I know this, right? Put us in a room with a hundred people and describe the same exact interaction between a couple. Everyone's going to have a different take on that situation, depending on their childhood, what they saw growing up, experiences they've had, their wounding, their adaptations. There's endless amounts of things that go into feed and shape our perspective, right? Now, what is so powerful about thoughts is that they drive the way you feel. And your feelings drive your actions. And this is true for every single one of us, every single one of us, even if you don't consider yourself an emotional person, right? Every action is based on an emotion, right? You pressed join this call because you were feeling an emotion. You were feeling curious, hopeful, right? You had the conversation you had with your spouse in the way that you had it with them because you were feeling an emotion. So one of the most common thoughts, my spouse doesn't care how I feel, right? And I want you to think about if that's true, if that's what you perceive as true, what is it like to to think that, to think that your spouse doesn't really care about how you feel? Or that in an argument or a conversation, they're so rude and disrespectful or whatever, right? It feels awful is how it feels, right? It feels discouraging. It feels rejecting. And so when you're feeling discouraged, rejected, awful, how do you show up? 
you're not like, hey, let's sit and have a emotional powwow together. You're like, get away from me. I don't even want to talk to you. I'm so hurt by what you said. I can't, I can't, right? And that's contrasted with if we just shape and massage that thought and get you to a better place, right? If the thought instead is, I can always talk to my spouse about the things that are on my mind. How does that feel, right? Probably feels safe, probably feels supportive, accepting, right? And when you're feeling that way, the way you start a conversation, the way you have a discussion is radically different, right? So the secret fuel that is going to help you, and what most people don't know, is harnessing the power of your thoughts to move you in the direction that you want to go. Focusing on thoughts that serve you, focusing on the things that help you feel good so then you can lead yourself well. Now, I want to be very clear because whenever I talk about thought work, people are like, do I just live in a fantasy land? No, this is not about trying to believe something that you don't actually believe. That doesn't serve anything in anyone right? But this is about you finding things that you actually believe that feel better to you, that help motivate you to do the thing that represents your personal standards of behavior, okay? So I want to give another example of this. I had a client who spent many, many years in the fawn mode in her relationship and really sort of catering to her spouse, self-sacrificing, and not really attending to her own needs, which led to a lot of resentment. And so then she swung the whole other way of like being very aggressive, very resentful. And she was overcompensating, right? For all of that time, feeling like her needs weren't being met. And so what we did, we got her to a place of believing my needs matter just as much as my partner's. Right. And I want you to think about like, what does that feel like? It feels like, okay, I can listen to you, hear you, understand you. And I can also share and express myself. This isn't a competition. There's space for both of us. Right. And that really helped her one, actually make healthy requests of things that she genuinely wanted. And it also helped her put up some boundaries of things that she just wasn't able to continue doing because they were stretching her way too thin and leading to resentment. Okay. So those are the main things that get in the way of you leading yourself well, right? Number one, those unhealed, unaddressed experiences from childhood, other relationships, your current marriage, the inability to regulate and manage your emotions. You don't have the healthy skills because you never saw them or not having the practice practiced skill of directing your mind. Okay. So that is, the, those are the obstacles, right? And really when you address those obstacles, you will lead yourself well in your marriage. And when both of you are doing that, both of you are leading yourself well in your marriage, both of you have addressed these obstacles, your communication is effortless because we now have two different people having conversations, right? So some of you, you're hearing this and your light bulbs are going off. Let me know in the chat if that's you. What makes sense to you? What resonates with you? What's really landing with you is like, oh my gosh, this is the work, right? I would love to hear. So feel free to type it in the chat. And I want to also acknowledge that for some of you, you may be listening to this and you're like, oh my gosh, this feels like a lot of work. I just wanted to come for like a quick, <laughs> a quick tip, right? This is not that because my work, and I think what distinguishes the way that I work with my clients is I work deeply. I want to uproot the systems and the belief systems and the patterns of being that are creating the fruits that you are actually experiencing now, the rotten fruits, right? And so it is so important. Yes, I'm going to teach you all of the 
actual technical skills of communicating well. I'm going to give you conversation structures to use. But we've got to address this stuff from the inside out in order for you to have lasting change. Otherwise, it's going to be a quick fad that you engage in for a period of time and then you revert back to exactly where you were before. Okay. So yes, it can feel like hard work, but here's what I also want you to know that the hardest part of this is what you're doing now. The hardest part of this is having argument after argument, days and weeks where you're not really talking to each other, where there's so much distance and tension because you haven't figured out your communication. What's really hard about this is carrying the weight of a, a disagreement or a conflict or communication breakdown, carrying the weight of that as you're trying to do your job, as you're trying to parent, as you're trying to take care of yourself, as you're trying to take care of your parents, right? And we're carrying the weight of this in our bodies, right? Like the emotional toll of not having good communication, not having a good marriage impacts your health. And many of my clients are in their, you know, middle ages, whatever that means to you. And our health is so precious. Our health is so sacred. And if learning these skills, doing some of this work, is going to make not only her marriage better, but our health better, then it is 100% worth it. And for many of us, the other thing that is hard is having an argument in front of your child and your child worrying. Are they going to be okay? Is, is this all right? Your child breathing in more dysfunction and communication and then replicating it for generations to come. That's the hard part not doing this work. Okay. And the payoff is priceless doing this work. The payoff is priceless, right? So that's what it takes to have really good communication. And I want to be the person to tell you the truth, right? Like I don't want to try to sugarcoat it with some very quick fix and some simple set of lists of tips that you can use. Yes, there's a place for that for sure. But if there's a wounded inner child in there, that's always feeling rejected, always feeling misunderstood, that person is not going to use those skills, right? If there's a person who's always angry and offended or feeling defensive and feeling shame and inadequacy, they're not going to use those skills. If there's a person who's thinking the worst of their partner and painting them out to be this horrible villain that they can never talk to, you're never going to use those skills. So we have to address this holistically. We have to address this comprehensively. And that is the point of this masterclass and sharing with you the four obstacles to self-leadership in your marriage, to you leading yourself well, and ultimately having great communication where you're heard and listened to each other, where you can get on the same page and ultimately create a better marriage. All right. So here's what we're going to do next. For those of you who are interested in learning about what I have available in terms of programming, I'm going to share the ways that you can work with me. And then I'm also going to answer and stay on a little bit to respond to any questions that you have about this content. Okay. So I am now going to, yes, you will get access to this recording. Yes. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to share some slides because some of this information that I'm going to talk you through now is really best seen. Um, so you can really digest exactly what it is that I am talking about. So let me just pull up my let me find my actual slides. Hold on one second. And you can go ahead and start putting your comments in the chat if you have them.
Okay. So you guys are super lucky. Let me just tell you how lucky you are because you are going to get an inside scoop to something that no one else knows about yet. So for those of you who've been following me for a while, you know that I offer private coaching. I do offer private coaching that is always available currently. <laughs> it is available. Let me say that it is currently available. I work with clients for six months at a time. We have weekly calls. We address all of these things. You have a very private and customized experience, but I am also releasing a new program that I'm super excited. And you guys are literally the first people to hear about it. So the name of that program is how to be married. I have been dreaming of this conceptualizing it, organizing it, marinating in this for two years, literally two years. And I am finally ready to release it to the world. And so you all are the first to hear about it. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to give you the opportunity to learn about this program. All right. Hopefully you can see everything great. So how to be married is a course. It is coaching and it is community. What does that mean? Here are the details. So it is a 12 month program. It is a course and includes a course, right? That has six modules. It's an online course. Let me say that. So everything is online accessible on your, your computer or smartphone. It is six modules and 18 interactive video lessons. So if you really got a lot out of this masterclass, which isn't even a course, it's a free masterclass, you are going to find incredible value out of any one of the modules in this course, okay? So it's six modules, 18 videos, so three videos each module. It is coaching. We have a monthly coaching call, a 60 minute monthly coaching call where we get together on Zoom. You raise your hand. We can be on screen and video and all see each other. You can keep your video off. It doesn't matter to me, but you will have the opportunity to actually be coached directly to me by me, right? It is personalized coaching in a group setting, right? So other people who are enrolled in the program with you, many of the people, like the people on this call, right? We will have a 60 minute monthly coaching call once per month over the course of 12 months. You get direct access to me to get coaching and support on everything in the program. There is also a community. I find that when I bring other like-minded couples together who are working on the same thing, everyone accelerates their learning and accelerates their progress because you have that beautiful, positive peer pressure. So if you are a person who can say like, I don't really have a lot of positive peers in my life that are like actively working on their marriage, actively taking the steps to be better human beings, this is your community to do that. You will find that here. Here are the modules, because I think it's really important for you to see what you get inside. So module one is your inner child that we talked about, right? So it's identifying your core wounds and your unmet needs. It's healing and reparenting yourself with actual tools. I will teach you how to heal and reparent yourself. So whatever gaps you got in your childhood from your own parents, you're going to be that loving parent to yourself and heal some of that stuff. You also are going to learn how to re-narrate the past in an empowering way. So many times when we have hard childhoods or we have hard experiences, even in other relationships, we have a, a story and a narrative that disempowers us, that limits us, that keeps us stuck way back there all the time. You're going to learn how to break out of that and reparent, I mean, re-narrate the past. So that's module one. Module two is all about self-leadership and being your best, what that actually looks like. So first you have to understand who are you being now and why, like what is driving the way you are showing up now? You will learn how to define and actually become your best self. And we will dive deeply into how to create internal motivation and your personal standards of behavior so that you can be your best no matter what. Module three is all about our emotions. 
So you're going to be able to name and identify the root cause of your emotions, like what's actually going on for you. You're going to practice and master the skill of sensing and tolerating emotions, meaning you're not going to react to them. You're not going to resist them. You're going to notice, oh, I'm feeling really angry. I'm not going to lash out. What a novel concept. <laughs> and then I'm going to provide you with tons and tons of actual practical, tangible, emotional regulation tools, how to keep yourself calm. It's a beautiful concept. It's a beautiful idea. Everybody wants to do it. This is how you do it. I'm going to give you actual tools. In this moment, this is what you do, right? Uh, module four is the mindset piece, right? You're going to learn the me versus we mentality. You're going to learn how to see the best in each other and assume goodwill. You're going to learn how to actually cultivate and intentionally create thoughts that serve you in being your best. Module five are those communication skills, right? We're going to talk about this idea of positive intent and goal-focused communication. If you got my emails to join this masterclass, you might've noticed that I kept asking, what do you want to get out of this? We have to have a goal of our communication in order for it to be productive. Sometimes we're just talking to complain or to vent. We don't have a goal. So I'm going to teach you how to create goal-focused communication. I'm going to also teach you how to always bring your best emotionally regulated self to a conversation. And then I have an entire library of communication tools and conversation structures. You can literally press play on a video, walk yourselves through a conversation as if I am that third party right there in your living room, guiding you through the conversation. These are the bumper guards that keep you having healthy, productive conversations. You're going to get tons of those examples and structures. Number six, module six, is relating and connecting skills. How do you actually relate well to each other? How do you connect? So you're going to learn how to define your healthy connection needs because here's something people don't know. We all have different levels of connection needs depending on your attachment style, which we also will dive into into this program. Some people really require and enjoy a lot of deep connection and some people don't. So you need to identify like which one you are, where you land on that so that you and your partner can have better conversations about how you connect, when you connect, how often you connect, the ways you connect so that no one's offended, that we're just on the same page and we've defined it. This is our healthy zone that works for both of us. You're gonna learn the concept of vulnerability and emotional intimacy, how to create that. And you're gonna master the skills of empathy, compassion, and understanding, okay? So that's what the actual course and the modules in the program look like. Other details, the first cohort of this program is starting October 1st. That's a little bit over a month from now. Um, the way that the course rolls itself out is you get a new video each week, each month, right? So there's like four months, I mean, four weeks in the month. So week one, week two, week three, new videos, each of those three weeks. And then the last week of each month is our live coaching call. So if we're in module one, the inner child, you're going to get that first video week one, that second video week two, that third video week three, then we have our coaching call to pull it all together and catch any gaps that you have. You also have the community, which is 24 seven, where it's an open space to ask your questions, celebrate your successes and get support when you are stuck. I, I personally uh, manage and navigate that community. So I'm in there and you'll get direct responses from me. And everything is app-based. So I host all of my coaching programs on a platform called Kajabi, which is a video, I mean, an app-based um, application. So if you have an iPhone, you can pull it up on your iPhone, just like any app on your phone. Your courses are there. Your call recordings are there. Everything is right there at your fingertips. Other details. The investment, you want to know how much this costs. So the investment for this program, again, it is 12 months, a year long program is you can pay monthly and that would be 500 a month for six payments. So 
I love for people to make an investment, be done with that investment and still be able to enjoy that investment and benefit from that investment. So if you want to pay monthly, we will condense your payments into six payments and that's 500 a month for six months. For the first six months, then the second six months, you're done, right? For a total of $3,000. Or if you want to pay in full, I offer an incentive for that. So you can just get your commitment done. You know you're done paying. You're in for the year and focus on that. And that is $2,500 for pay in full. Now, because you guys are literally the first to be able to take advantage of this opportunity, I have an extra incentive for you getting in right away. If you sign up in the next 48 hours, I think it's 48 hours, it's maybe a little bit more than 48 hours, probably 72 hours. If you sign up by September 1st, you get an additional $500 off, okay? So that is in both instances. So that takes your monthly payments down from 500 a month to 417 a month times six. Or if you're paying in full, it is just $2,000 to pay in full. And in addition, you will get two private coaching calls with me directly in the month of September, right? Because remember the program itself, your courses start October 1. But if you sign up by September 1st, you get $500 off and two private coaching calls with me, which is valued. I don't even want to say how much it's valued because my prices, if I have any of my current clients on here, uh, the prices have increased since you, since you signed up. So you're very, very fortunate, but it is a four figure investment for two private coaching calls with me. Okay. But that's yours free. It's included as a bonus when you sign up by September 1st. Okay. So that is the How to Be Married program. I want to just also outline for those of you who are like, that's good. And also I'm really a private coaching person. I want a very curated, bespoke experience. So my private coaching option covers all the same stuff that we just talked about in How to Be Married. So you get every single thing that I've just described there, plus for my private coaching clients, there is an additional set of resources and coaching programs that you have access to. You also get personalized resource resources, and then you get six months of private coaching with me. Every single week, we have 45 minutes together. You have my private, customized, personalized, undivided attention. And you also have direct private access to me in between sessions. I have a very specific app that I use with my private coaching clients where you literally have like a beeline to me and you can access me directly, privately. So regardless, either way, if you want to join How to Be Married, if you want to talk with me and apply to become a private coaching client, your next step is book booking a call to work with me, right? So I want to leave that up there. It's I will actually link to it in the chat. But I also want to give you the links so that I know sometimes when you're on Zoom, it's helpful to just have a link <laughs> and to be able to like bookmark it on your phone, on your computer. I'm that way. Whenever I'm on a call and someone mentions a link, I'm like, I need to pull up the link right now so I don't forget. So I'm going to drop those links in the chat. So the first one is going to be the private call if you want to um, be able to work with me in my private coaching. You just schedule a consultation call that's by application and consultation only. And then for any of you who are already like, hey, I for sure know I'm ready for how to be married. I am going to put those links in there for you as well so that you have those and you can just pull those up. So here's the payment plan link. That's going to be there for you. 
And then here is the link for if you would like to pay in full. And again, this special 500 off is available to you until September 1st. All right, let me see what questions we have. The question is, what do you do if your partner is shut off? This is a great question. So it's hard, it's always hard for me to answer this question as um, thoroughly <laughs> as it probably requires um, without more details and without more understanding of what that actually means and what that actually looks like. But if you're experiencing a dynamic where it feels like you are really making the effort, you are really reaching out to your partner, but they are not receptive to that, it could be for a lot of reasons. It could be that your partner is resentful. It could be that they're triggered in some way. And what you do will vary, right? So my first line of action would be to talk with them, right? To say, hey, I really want to understand what's going on for you, what it is. And if that literally gets you nowhere, right? If it gets you nowhere, then it becomes a more assertive conversation, right? Of like, hey, I'm really trying my best to work this out with you. I'm really trying my best to nurture and take care of our relationship. And I'm not getting what I need from you in order for us to do that successfully. Right. And just really being honest about that. Right. And if you do that and they're still not interested in making any effort, then the work becomes you focusing on you. What does that look like? What does that mean? It means boundaries, number one, right? Where you have to now think about, okay, this person is unavailable for the kind of marriage that I want. So even before you put up the boundaries, let me even rewind back to that. Before you put up the boundaries, you have to understand that what you're asking for, you want to pass what you're asking for through the funnel of, is what I'm asking for healthy? Is, if that, is that what I'm asking for? If like, when I look at a marriage, when I look at this relationship, the things that I'm wanting, the things that I'm willing to work on and create, does that fall into what is a healthy relationship? If the answer is yes, then we have that checked off. You can trust yourself. You can know that what you're asking for is the right thing to ask for, and it's not asking for too much, and it's not, um, it's not like unwarranted. It's like, no, I'm standing for healthy, and I want healthy, right? And if you do that, and they're still not available, then that's when we go to the boundaries. That's when we go to you deciding for yourself, how long can I stay? in this situation where my partner is like cut off from trying to work on our marriage, okay? Let's see, there's another comment there. Yeah, so you have a very defensive spouse who puts the blame on you. That is them not following this process, right? Because healthy communication is like, you're able to listen, you're able to be open. It, it's so hard when someone comes to me with this as the, the dynamic. So it really is a boundary, right? There, there comes a point, and I don't know how long you've been struggling with this being the dynamic, so you can let me know that. But if it is the dynamic and you literally feel like you have tried and tried and tried and they're still stuck in this way of being, obviously we can trace it back to one of the things, one of the four things that I've mentioned here. Either they have some childhood wounding that has not been addressed, either they can't control their own emotions, they don't have the skill, or they don't have the right mindset. So we can identify what might be going on for them and know that. But when someone is in that unhealthy state, right? It's sort of like you can't let their dysfunction bring you down and 
make you shrink and make you be less of who you are and who you want to be as the best of yourself in that relationship. And so that then requires boundaries. It then requires boundaries where you have to bless and release them. Now that looks a lot of different ways in a lot of people's marriages, right? That might be bless and release. And just like, I'm going to coexist with you in a way where like, I'm not going to have a lot of expectations because it's clear that you're not interested in partnering with me on those expectations. So I'm just going to release you. Like, I don't need that from you. I'm not going to ask that of you. I'm not going to try that with you anymore. And you can do that from a very loving, respectful place. Like it doesn't have to be like, forget it. I'm shutting down and I'm not here either. Right. Or it does in some cases for some people reach a point where they're like, I can no longer be in this relationship with it being this way. Right. So you will know and you know, I work with clients on that as well. That is something that I do definitely inside my private coaching programs, because that is a dynamic that's a little bit different that requires a very customized, personalized approach based on what is going on in the relationship. So if this is something you're really actively looking for support on and you want to make some significant, tangible progress, I just highly encourage you to go ahead and schedule a consultation call with me and we can talk more about how I could support you exactly through that. Right. Other questions. You're so welcome. Any other questions or comments? You guys have been an amazing, amazing group. All right, going once going twice. If you are on my email list, like if you got to this masterclass because you're on my email list, because you got an actual email, um, you will be able to obviously connect with me directly through any of the emails that you got with the link here. So you can, if there are questions you didn't get a chance to answer here, you are more than welcome to just go ahead and reply to any of those emails and ask away. I will check that particular um, inbox. And then if you got here on another platform, right? If you got here from LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram, you are more than welcome to just go ahead and send me a direct message for any questions that you might have or any comments you might have about this masterclass or even requesting any of the links to be able to sign up for the program or to schedule a call with me. So um, you can find me on all those platforms. I'm at Dr. Siobhan on most of them. My name is very unique. <laughs> so if you just Google Siobhan Parat on LinkedIn, Instagram, or Facebook, you will find me there and you can send me a direct message on those platforms as well. All right. Any other questions for tonight? All right. It has been a total delight to share this information with you. I trust that it landed well. I trust that even in the coming days, everything that you've just heard will grow even more and impact you at an even deeper level and that you will have new ideas, new ways of really leading yourself well in your marriage and in your communication. All right, you are so very welcome. You are so very welcome. All right, everyone. See you next time. Bye for now.